Yeah, so let us begin today with the discussion of the quiz that we had last week. I will go through the answers quickly so you can check against your answer books. Um, we start with question 1 which was just true or false and the first statement was a conservative dynamical system given by an equation of motion of the form x dot is f of x, x dot is f of x and we are told it is conservative cannot have any attractors. And the answer is that it is true because for a conservative system this implies that del dot f is equal to 0 and if that is so then we know that the volume element in phase space is preserved under the flow. So since we have defined a conservative system as one in which the volume elements do not change under the flow a conservative dynamical system cannot have any attractors because if you have an attractor no matter what the nature of the attractor either a point attractor like a critical point or a limit cycle a stable limit cycle or more complicated attractors the fact is that all the points in the basin of attraction of this attractor would eventually asymptotically fall into the attractor and therefore this definite reduction in phase space volume and since a conservative system the flow does not allow for any change in the phase space volume it cannot have any attractors. Hamiltonian systems of course are special cases of conservative systems and they would not have any attractors either. The next question asked the harmonic oscillator is the only system whose time period of oscillation is independent of the amplitude of oscillation and this is false. We have ourselves seen a number of oscillators isochronous oscillators whose time periods are actually independent of the amplitude of oscillation. These are called isochronous oscillators because it means that the amplitude the time period of oscillation is independent of the energy of the oscillator. Under special circumstances this can happen even in a nonlinear problem yes. I stated that a basic characteristic of the linear harmonic oscillator is that it is isochronous that it does not have a time period which is dependent on the amplitude or the energy but the converse is not necessarily true that if you have isochronicity it does not necessarily imply that you have a harmonic oscillator you could have nonlinear oscillators which would do the same thing. Here is an example of an oscillator whose time period would actually be independent of the energy of the oscillator consider for instance motion in one dimension with a Hamiltonian given by p squared over 2 m plus 1 half m let us call it k k x squared plus a force which goes like a some constant a over 2 x squared potential of this kind. Now what would the force on this particle be it would be minus the derivative of the potential so the force on the particle is minus dv over dx this is equal to minus kx that is the harmonic oscillator part and then the derivative of this potential which would go like plus over x cubed and what does this do as x goes to 0 what does the potential look like in this case. what is the shape of the potential so let us plot v of x is equal to 1 half k x squared plus a over 2 x squared where k and a are positive constants and then if I plot this potential here is x versus v of x it clearly goes to infinity as x goes to 0 on both sides it also goes to infinity as x goes to plus or minus infinity and of course it is clear that in between it comes down and does this and symmetrically so on this side as well and the particle can oscillate either in this well here or in this well here quite symmetrically for the same energy it could either have a center of oscillation on the left hand side or on the right hand side and if you compute the time period of oscillation in this potential it turns out that it is actually independent of where you are of what the energy is. I leave that to you as an exercise to check out that this oscillator is isochronous and it is not a linear harmonic oscillator because the force is not just proportional to the negative displacement but also has an extra term here. 
when I say linear harmonic or harmonic I mean that the potential is a quadratic function of the displacement and that is all that is needed anything beyond that is non-linear and the reason it is non-linear is because the equation of motion becomes non-linear recall that the equation of motion here is x dot is delta h over delta p so it is p over m but p dot is minus delta h over delta x and that is minus k x if you restricted yourself to just this but if you also included the non-linear term you have a, a over x cubed. So this is the reason why we call these oscillators non-linear because the equation of motion is no longer linear it has non-linear terms in the coordinates. Yeah. Now the reason I used I kept saying linear harmonic oscillators which you are used to calling as a simple harmonic oscillator because we also looked at the word linear there was a bit of a misnomer I should have said one dimensional harmonic oscillator because the oscillation was in one direction the x direction alone we also looked at combinations of oscillators oscillator on a plane oscillator in three dimensions and so on they are not linear harmonic oscillators they are just harmonic oscillators. So I use the word linear in the other sense namely along a line motion along a line a given line should perhaps not do that should just call it a one dimensional harmonic oscillator in that case but every harmonic oscillator has a linear equation of motion linear in the coordinates and momenta and when you introduce non-linearity in the potential you at once have these extra terms and it is not at all guaranteed that the oscillations would have a time period independent of the energy but in this particular case it turns out that they do and that is an interesting exercise to look at there are profound implications to this this model here is not pulled out of the hat it has further implications and it is a specific um, it is a member of a specific family of potentials a model which has many many other interesting properties. So even though the potential does not look parabolic at all the oscillations in this are independent of the energy of the oscillator this could very well happen. We saw however that if you took a potential of the form a power of x here in one dimension just a power of x no extra terms then the only oscillator which had a time period independent of the amplitude was in fact the harmonic oscillator the quadratic power here nothing else but that was restricted to the class of potentials which just had a single power of x and nothing more than that more complicated functions could do this there are in fact an infinite number of uh, potentials which would lead to oscillations independent of the amplitude of oscillation or the energy in general okay the next question uh, in what sense the question is is there anything which characterizes the, uh, the potentials not so simple to classify not so simple it is uh, possible to a certain extent but not so simple these models the one with the x squared and the 1 over x squared they form they are part of a much bigger family of potentials where this property would be satisfied not just in one dimension but in higher dimensions as well or not just with one oscillator but many oscillators on a line it is not a this is not a this is not a sufficiency condition this is not the only one that does it in the sense that it is not a it is not a unique property to this particular uh, oscillator there are other potentials many other potentials which would do this and to some extent they can be classified we will not get into that right now. Okay. The third question was straightforward it said consider a canonical transformation of an autonomous Hamiltonian system under such a transformation the form of Hamilton's equations is preserved although the functional form of the Hamiltonian in the new variables need not remain the same as the original one that in fact is what happens in a general canonical transformation so the statement is quite true. The next one says every dynamical system given by an equation of the form x dot equal to f of x can be transformed into a gradient system by a suitable choice of dynamical variables so the proposition is that this could always be transformed by a suitable choice of variables to look like y dot is equal to the gradient with respect to y of phi of y no such guarantee at all because this would imply that every vector field could be writable as the gradient of some kind of scalar 
this is not certainly true, uh, it is certainly not true at all. So, it is not necessary that this should happen, it is not true that every dynamical system can be transformed to a gradient system by suitable choice of uh, variables, change of variables. We go on to the next, homoclinic orbits can occur in both conservative and dissipative systems and the answer is yes, indeed they can because all that a homoclinic orbit does is to start at a saddle point and part of its unstable manifold goes out and comes back forms a loop eventually and the part that comes back is part of the stable manifold of the saddle point and there is no restriction on this, it could happen in a dissipative system, it could happen in a conservative system as well. Pardon me, it does not matter whether the volume elements change or not because you are only talking about a single trajectory here and there is no reason at all why this cannot happen independent of what else happens anywhere else. Okay. Linear stability analysis need not reveal the correct nature of the flow in the vicinity of a critical point that has a center manifold. This is the whole point about center manifolds and it is certainly a true statement, it could but on the other hand it might let you down and therefore you have to go beyond linear stability analysis as we saw with specific examples once you have a center manifold. The Liouville Arnold criterion for integrability is applicable to any even dimensional dynamical system and that is false because the Liouville Arnold criterion is specific to Hamiltonian systems which form a special class of dynamical systems of even dimensionality. So, there are many many other systems innumerable systems which have nothing to do with Hamiltonian systems and there is no question of anything like this criterion in those cases. The next statement said a bifurcation occurs at some value of a parameter in a dynamical system if the nature of the flow changes qualitatively as the parameter crosses that value and yes indeed that is the very definition that we use for elementary bifurcations. The critical points corresponding to an undamped simple pendulum can only be centers or saddle points that is also true because this is a Hamiltonian system undamped simple pendulum therefore there is no attractor in the problem it is a Hamiltonian system and the only critical points you could have in this simple system are centers or saddle points and we saw that you had centers and saddle points alternating corresponding to the minima and the maxima of the cosine potential. Consider the two dimensional dynamical system given by the following equations x square x dot is x squared minus y squared and y dot is equal to 2 x y and the proposition was the critical point at the origin is a saddle point and that is false because the saddle point a saddle point has a winding number the vector field corresponding to a saddle point has a winding number of minus 1 but this is a dipole field and the winding number here is 2 and this is topologically quite distinct from a saddle point and it is a higher order critical point because this is not even linearizable in the vicinity of the origin. There are no linear terms here at all it is intrinsically non-linear and it is happened by the coalescence of two singularities, two simple critical points. So, when you say a critical yeah. point yes. the origin, yes. does, it, does it imply that one of the, un, uh, I mean the unfolding one of the critical points is a saddle point or as a whole is a saddle It's not, no, no, it is a critical point, I mean that is it. So, there is no question of any unfolding or anything like that. This is just a critical point as so it, it stands. If uh, an unfolding, yes. it to a saddle point. It could, like a saddle yeah. node for example, it could, problem. it could, yes. So but I would not call, no, no I would not call it the saddle point at all because this is a, the statement being made has to do with the singularity of this vector field at the origin. So, it is a local statement about the singularity at the origin and that is in this case undoubtedly a dipole singularity and therefore, has a winding number 2 and it is not a saddle point. It cannot be deformed smoothly into a saddle point because the winding number is a topological invariant and it says that no matter how you transform coordinates and shift and bend and so on you cannot change the nature of the you cannot change the winding number. So, a saddle point remains a saddle point. On the other hand that was not true for nodes you saw for instance that something that looks like a source a radial field could become a tangential field. So, something that looks like a node could transform into a spiral point and so on these could be done by smooth distortions, but certainly you cannot take a saddle point and convert it and distort it into uh, dipole field or anything like that. So, a hope bifurcation can only occur in a dissipative system and it is true because a hope bifurcation is one where a limit cycle is involved and it is a bifurcation where a stable critical point 
bifurcates into a stable limit cycle and an unstable critical point or if it is a subcritical bifurcation an unstable critical point bifurcates into an unstable limit cycle and a stable critical point in either case attractors are involved and therefore this sort of thing cannot happen in a Hamiltonian system or more generally in a conservative system but it can certainly and does frequently happen in dissipative systems. Finally if the Poisson bracket of A with B vanishes and that of B with C vanishes then the Poisson bracket of A with C necessarily vanishes and that is false because all you can say from the Jacobi identity is if A with B is 0 and B with C is 0 this would imply then and you are asked to find out if the Poisson bracket of A with C vanishes what you can say assert is that the Poisson bracket of this is 0 by the Jacobi identity because the other two terms drop out and all you can say is that this quantity need not be 0 it is some function whose Poisson bracket with B happens to be 0 and that is about it so you cannot say anything more. However if you have one degree of freedom systems and their Hamiltonian systems for example a single one degree of freedom Hamiltonian system and then you know that the Hamiltonian in an autonomous case is the only functionally independent constant of the motion in the problem then anything else which you find which is also a constant of the motion would necessarily have to be a function of the Hamiltonian and then of course if A is the Hamiltonian B and C are functions of the Hamiltonian then of course all the Poisson brackets of these quantities with the Hamiltonian vanish but that is not true in general in general this is all that you can assert. Okay. Now we had an implication to this the implication was that in a Hamiltonian system if you set B equal to the Hamiltonian for instance then A with B equal to 0 implies that A is a constant of the motion. Similarly C with the Hamiltonian equal to 0 implies that C is a constant of the motion and then this statement implies that the commutator the Poisson commutator of A with C the Poisson bracket of A with C is also a constant of the motion. So what it implies is that in a Hamiltonian system if you find two constants of the motion their Poisson bracket if it is not trivial is also a constant of the motion so it has a practical use in that, uh, in that instance. The next question was multiple choice is you have considered a general Hamiltonian system and the first statement was the Hamiltonian is always a sum of a kinetic energy term and a potential energy term which depends only on the generalized coordinates this need not be so at all because I pointed out early on that all that a Hamiltonian system needs is that you have an even dimensional phase space with a certain structure the Poisson bracket structure canonical Poisson bracket structure and a Hamiltonian function specified to you which then determines the equations of motion of all the variables there is no restriction that the Hamiltonian should be of the form of a kinetic energy plus a potential energy that is only true for simple mechanical systems not true in general. In fact even the statement I made about a Hamiltonian system namely that it should be even dimensional and it should have this canonical Poisson bracket structure could be generalized there are more general forms of writing Hamiltonian systems where you do not even need to have an even dimensionality of the space where the meaning of the Poisson bracket itself could be generalized further but that is the mathematical detail we have not got into but certainly does not have to be a sum of a potential and a kinetic energy. Saddle node bifurcations cannot occur in this system they certainly can saddle node bifurcations we saw with an example of a potential itself that a saddle node bifurcation certainly can occur in a simple potential problem Hamiltonian problem. The dynamical symmetry group of transformations need not necessarily be identical to the group of canonical transformations and that is certainly true because the dynamical symmetry group of a Hamiltonian system could be much smaller than the group of canonical transformations. If you recall in n degrees of freedom the group of canonical transformations was the symplectic group 2n over the reals whereas the dynamical symmetry group would depend on whether the Hamiltonian had some special symmetries or not and most gen, most Hamiltonians do not and when they do they have much smaller symmetry groups. The example we took was the two dimensional harmonic oscillator which had a symmetry group 
uh, which whose canonical uh, group of canonical transformations was the symplectic group 4 sp4 on the reals on the other hand the symmetry group of the hamiltonian itself was the group of rotations in four dimensions so4 and the intersection of these two was a much smaller group which was isomorphic to su2 so we saw that this needn't be true at all action angle variables necessarily exist for the system again no because the hamiltonian needn't be integrable completely at all in fact you could have a few action variables less than n in number and that is not sufficient to integrate the system completely so they need to exist at all in this sense remember that once an action angle pair exists then the angle variable does not appear in the Hamiltonian and it becomes a cyclic coordinate and this is not always possible in general if it is fully integrable then the statement is under suitable conditions you have an action angle transformation which will then lead you to a set of variables in which all the angle variables disappear from the Hamiltonian and the Hamiltonian is a function of the action variables alone which are then constants of the motion but that need not be true in general. The next statement pertain to a general autonomous dynamical system described by a set of n coupled nonlinear first order ordinary differential equations like x dot equal to f of x. The phase space can e be either even dimensional or odd dimensional and that is certainly true automatically there is always at least one attractor in the system not necessary for instance if it is a conservative system there need, be, there need be any attractors at all the dynamics is necessarily measure preserving not at all it could be a dissipative system so it could very well have a measure which shrinks there must exist at least n functionally independent constants of the motion that do not have any time explicit time dependence no because if that happens you cannot have any motion at all in an n dimensional space. So if you have n constants of the motion which are independent and do not depend on time at all then the system cannot even be integrated there is no motion there is absolutely nothing to do <coughs> once you have specified the initial conditions the system just remains there you cannot move out after that so that is not valid either okay. we go on to question 2 which was fairly straightforward. and the system was specified in polar coordinates by sin pi over r and theta dot equal to r in plane polar coordinates we are asked to find in this case the limit cycles of the system if any as well as the stability and it is immediately clear from here that limit cycles at r equal to 1 over n where n equal to 1 2 Etc. exist and then this becomes sin pi and it vanishes so r does not change on those points and you get circular limit cycle so you get a family of concentric limit cycles of radius 1 a half a third and so on and so forth now if I took the system near one of these limit cycles in the vicinity of these one of these limit cycles then r dot is approximately equal to sin pi n which is 0 plus r minus 1 over n the derivative of this at r equal to 1 over n the derivative of this is of course pi times cos pi over r but r is 1 over n so this becomes cos pi n times the derivative of this which is minus 1 over r squared which becomes minus n squared plus higher orders so this becomes equal to minus pi n squared minus 1 to the power n r minus 1 over n plus higher order terms and if n is equal to 1 this gives you a minus sign along with this and then it says r dot is proportional to r minus 1 with a positive coefficient here therefore for sufficiently large values of r this flows out because r dot is positive it goes away and if r is less than 1 it flows away inwards so it is clear immediately that at r equal to 1 this particular limit cycle this limit cycle here whatever is inside here flows out whatever, whatever starts here flows out because theta dot is r if r is greater than 1 theta dot is a positive number and it increases and therefore you expect it flows off in this fashion and since theta dot is positive the flow is in the counterclockwise direction on this limit cycle 
and anything which starts in is going to flow away from it towards the next limit cycle which is the limit cycle at r is equal to a half. So things flow in towards this and similarly between one third and half things flow out towards the half. So you have an infinite number of limit cycles nested within each other the outermost one r equal to 1 is unstable the next one is stable the one inside is unstable and so on all the way. So that is a full phase portrait what happens at r equal to 0 in this case what can you say about r equal to 0 well this function does not have a limit as r goes to 0 here that is quite clear and what you have is an accumulation of limit cycles of alternating stability so it is a crazy singular point but it is just an accumulation point for limit cycles and that is about all you can say as r goes to 0. So the flow gets more and more and more intricate as you get inwards towards this it is not a simple critical point by any means okay. Well, it is like asking as n tends to infinity is it even or odd I mean you know right so it is the same problem as before the limit does not exist the limit does not exist so the whole point is that the limit as r goes to 0 of sin pi over r does not exist there is no definite limit that is it in what sense well it is clear that everything we write down here mathematically is modeling some physical system to some degree of accuracy. So the question of you know whether it actually is described does it actually describe a physical system right down to r equal to 0 is a moot point in that sense very unlikely to happen right. Let us go on to the next topic and I would like to introduce to you the idea of Lyapunov functions Lyapunov's direct method which I briefly mentioned a little earlier and what I intend to do is to work out a little bit of this in terms of examples and maybe give some problems so that you could work out things and see how this method works. Now this method is useful it is a method for analyzing the stability of a critical point and it differs from the linearization method which we learnt about so far where if you recall we took a particular critical point we linearize the system about this critical point and then if the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix at this point had no zero real part and the point was hyperbolic then we identified the stability or otherwise of this critical point based on what the real parts of these eigenvalues did if all the real parts if the real if at least one real part is positive you ended up with something that was unstable some direction which things would flow away but if all of them are negative things things flowed in asymptotically and you had asymptotic stability. We also saw that if you have a center manifold if there are eigenvalues whose real parts are 0 then either you have a center or you have more complicated behavior but the stability is not uniquely decided by linearization about that point. In those cases Lyapunov's direct method helps you to do this and the method works as follows suppose for this dynamical system x dot equal to f of x suppose you have a critical point a critical point at x equal to 0. So let us consider the origin to be a critical point without loss of generality and see what happens in the neighborhood of the origin. So here is the origin and there is some neighborhood of the origin in which if I can find a function and let us call it v of x it is called a Lyapunov function with the following properties v of x is such that v of 0 is equal to 0 so it vanishes at the origin at the critical point and v of x is greater than 0 at all other points in this neighborhood I then say v of x is a positive definite function so if this is true I say v is positive definite on the other hand if it is also possibly equal to 0 at one or more points in the neighborhood other than the origin 
then I say it is positive semi definite and the same st similar statement is true for negative definite and negative semi definite if it is less than 0 everywhere then it is negative definite less than or equal to 0 it is negative semi definite okay. Now V has nothing to do with the dynamical system it is just a Lyapunov function an auxiliary function which I am going to try to find then the statements are as follows Lyapunov stability theorems and there are many of them but in the simplest form the stability statements are as follows statements are in brief one if there exists a positive definite V and if V dot is less than 0 in the neighborhood in which V is positive definite by dot I mean the time derivative of this V then the critical point is asymptotically stable to a little less rigorous a uh, little less uh, stringently if there exists a positive definite V and if V dot is less than or equal to 0 could vanish at some points in the neighborhood then the critical point is stable. Recall again that a center was stable but not asymptotically stable a spiral point an asymptotically stable spiral point definitely things fell into this spiral point but need not be stable. So these two do not exclude each other in some sense they are independent concepts and finally yes not necessarily we will see we will see examples. So things could be stable and asymptotically stable but they could be asymptotically stable without being stable okay. so the statement is got to do with finding specific Lyapunov functions of course as you can see if I can find this if I can find this then definitely I assert that the critical point is asymptotically stable but if I can only prove this and there are points where it vanishes and I cannot prove that it is actually non-zero at, at every point that V dot is less than or at some points equal to 0 then all you can say is that the critical point is stable. There can be points where it is stable but not asymptotically stable. We are going to see we are going to see this with examples right away yeah, what happens and 3 you also have a statement of instability if there exists once again a uh, positive definite V and V dot is greater than 0 then the CP is unstable many refinements of these statements are possible but I am just giving the simplest version here and we are going to look at examples. Of course you could turn this around and instead of V you consider minus V then of course if V is positive definite and V dot is greater than 0 it would translate into saying if V is negative definite and V dot is less than 0. So instead of V you could always choose minus V as your Lyapunov function and then whatever you say about positive definiteness becomes a statement about negative definiteness. Now let us look at examples and see how to apply this and I am going to go through a series of examples but you will see how powerful this uh, theorem is but we need to know what V dot has to do with things and the reason is the, the explanation is very simple if I consider V as a function of X and I consider dV over dt which is V dot what is this equal to well it is a function of X and therefore this is equal to delta V over delta Xi Xi dot but from the flow equations on the solution trajectories this is also equal to delta V over delta Xi 
f i of x the ith component of the vector field f and this is summed over i the summation over impl uh, repeated indices is implied I have not written it down but this is i equal to 1 to n and this is of course equal to grad v dot f. Now what is the direction of gradient of v? If v is a function in what direction is gradient of v? It is normal to the level surfaces of v and the flow specifies the direction in which the trajectory moves in phase space. So you can see that this quantity here is telling you something about the relative directions of the gradient of v and the direction of the flow. So it is like having a level surface and finding out if the flow is going inwards into the surface at all times in which case it has to go and hit some point or is it flowing out. So in very heuristic terms that is the way in which the stability uh, theorems emerge from a consideration of dv over dt. But let us look at an example right away so quick ideas in our mind let us look at this simple two dimensional system oh and it is not restricted to two dimensions at all so this is true for an n dimensional system and that is what makes it interesting. But let us look at simple two dimensional examples so the first example I am going to look at is x dot equal to y y dot equal to minus x which is of course the harmonic oscillator all over again in suitable units and now what can you tell me about this what should I choose to be the Lyapunov function here is where there are no simple guidelines available what would one choose as the Lyapunov function in this instance well a good choice would be we know already that this is going to be a center at the origin and we know that it is stable but not asymptotically stable what would you choose as a Lyapunov function I would like to choose something that is positive definite something which vanishes at the origin and in a neighborhood of the origin does not go to 0. Uh, well I would like to choose something that is got a definite sign so it must be at least quadratic pardon me I could choose x squared plus y squared so I certainly choose that if I choose v of x comma y equal to one half x squared plus y squared which you recognize is the energy of this oscillator in suitable units I have set the mass and the frequency equal to one then this function is positive definite in a neighborhood of the origin in the sense we have defined it to be it is vanishes at the origin and it is not zero anywhere else in a neighborhood of the origin. So what is the gradient of V? Its components are just X and Y as it stands. What do you get if you combine it with this? So what do you get from gradient of V? dot f this is the vector field f so it says take this component multiplied with this take this component multiplied with this and add the two and you get zero therefore we go back here and ask which of these applies we have a positive definite v and we have v dot not less than zero strictly but equal to zero so certainly this criterion applies and we are guaranteed that this critical point is stable. Now of course if you could find some other v some other function altogether where this was valid then the critical point would also be have been proved to be asymptotically stable and we know that is not the case in the harmonic oscillator so it implies that you cannot find the positive definite function v such that v dot is 0 because if you did then it would contradict what we already know about the harmonic oscillator. No, it doesn't say that at all. Why should it say that? Uh -huh. If all you can prove is that v dot is less than equal to zero, then all you've established is that the critical point is stable. Okay. Now it's quite yes. No. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? why do you say that ah okay now I see the confusion no if you can show that v dot is strictly less than 0 not 0 then you have shown that it is asymptotically stable and in such cases 
in such cases yes indeed you proved stability but you proved a much stronger statement as well here but you do not go the other way as in this example all I have succeeded in showing with this Lyapunov function is that v dot which is grad v dot f is 0 so it hits this case here I am unable to show that it is less than 0. So the statement I am making is that had I been able to find a Lyapunov function which was positive definite and for which v dot was strictly negative then I would have been led to the conclusion that this critical point is in fact asymptotically stable in addition to being stable. No it need not be but the Lyapunov criterion is telling you see it is a question of the choice of the Lyapunov function so the same function does not satisfy this as well as that that is quite clear. So let us go over this again I guess and pull out of the top of my hat a certain Lyapunov function and for this Lyapunov function I show that it is positive definite that is trivial and I see that V dot is strictly 0. And then I look down here and ask which of these applies and it is this case that applies I conclude that this critical point is stable okay. now if I did not know anything more about this system this is all I could conclude about it and then I might wonder perhaps this critical point is not only stable but also asymptotically stable I would like to examine if that is so if so I need to find another Lyapunov function some other cleverer choice of function where I could actually establish this and I am unable to do so. So the point about Lyapunov stability has to do with a clever choice of a Lyapunov function and the remarkable statement is if you can find even one Lyapunov function which satisfies the conditions of this theorem then you can conclude whatever the theorem states. but that may not be the best this is certainly true but this is a statement about stability here okay. So we have seen stability for this particular problem the simple harmonic problem or the oscillator problem but we also know this problem can be explicitly solved and it is not asymptotically stable it is a Hamiltonian system here. So the conclusion would be that you cannot find such a V no matter how hard you try but you have to understand that this is not a it is not that you can do this in all cases you are trying to find out if in the absence of any information some statement can be made about stability and that is all the Lyapunov function does okay. So let us see a few more examples then we come back and answer some of these questions Sir, yeah. A yeah. Point yes 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 you would not be able to find a successful Lyapunov function which would then satisfy this criterion as well yes yes indeed just as in this case we are not able to find a Lyapunov function I am just asserting this so that this is so that you cannot find a Lyapunov function for which this is true in this instance no it is not I mean there are many many extensions to this but it is a starting point so let us look at the next instance the next instance we added something to the oscillator and we did the following we put minus x times if you recall x squared plus y squared but let us be general and let us put some phi of x comma y and minus y phi of x comma y where phi is a continuous function it has continuous first partial derivatives and so on what can one say now I still choose this v and then what do I get I get gradient of v equal to x comma y and therefore v dot is the gradient of v dotted with this and what does that give you so these two terms cancel but I get a minus x squared phi and then I out here I get a minus y squared times phi so this becomes minus r squared times phi of x comma y now the Lyapunov function I have chosen is certainly it is the it is just the energy of the unperturbed simple harmonic oscillator it is a positive definite function vanishes at the origin non zero everywhere outside the origin and I happen to choose this function and decide and see that v dot in this case is minus r squared phi 
now what can one say suppose phi is positive definite then what would you say if this is greater than 0 phi greater than 0 in a neighborhood of the origin it is positive definite then v dot is negative definite and therefore I would say the critical point is asymptotically stable on the other hand if I know that phi is less than 0 if that is the way this function is then v dot becomes positive definite v is positive definite and I can certainly assert that the critical point is unstable and this would apply. So without further analysis depending on what this function does and the fact that I know such a Lyapunov function exists I am able to make this statement about the stability of the critical point. So this is the power of Lyapunov's method direct method it is called Lyapunov's second method or direct method because it depends on your clever choice of these functions here. Let us yeah yes ah, the question is can I choose let us do the next example and see if you can choose x squared plus y squared as a universal Lyapunov function see what happens. So the other problem I do not want to erase this the other problem we looked at was the simple pendulum which too had linear harmonic, harmonic oscillations for sufficiently small amplitudes. So let us look at that example and see what happens there we had x dot equal to y and y dot was equal to on the right hand side minus sin x for the undamped oscillator and then if you put in damping you also had a minus y in this fashion in suitable units this was the damped simple harmonic oscillator with some special choice of units for the frequency and the damping coefficient what happens now and I am going to choose v as he suggested I choose v equal to one half x squared plus y squared so this would imply that v dot is equal to x multiplied by this so this is x y plus y multiplied by this so this is minus y squared minus y sin x I am interested in seeing what happens near the origin near the critical point at the origin where I know that there are going to be small oscillations if you did not have damping I have included damping here so what happens now this becomes equal to y times x minus sin x minus y squared and even if I say the neighborhood that I am interested in is restricted to a small neighborhood of the origin and y is approximately 0 so I neglect the quadratic term as you, you can see immediately that x minus sin x could have either sign. And therefore you are finished you cannot make a statement about whether it is positive definite or negative definite and so on not able to do that in this case. So this is not a very good choice what would you suggest then this is not the energy of the simple pendulum at all the undamped simple pendulum so the next choice would be to say shall I choose the energy of the simple pendulum itself undamped simple pendulum after all that too is a positive definite function let us see if we can choose that as the Lyapunov function so instead of this I replace it with half y squared plus 1 minus cos x which was the potential energy and that is a positive definite function also because the least value it has is 0 at the origin and then there is a neighborhood of the origin in which it is got only positive values so what happens now the gradient of v is equal to I differentiate this with respect to x and what do I get here it is a vector with the following components the derivative with respect to x this gives you sin x and y so this implies immediately that v dot is y sin x minus y sin x minus y squared and this cancels out and you get v dot is minus y squared what can you conclude now this is the damped simple pendulum remember it is the damped simple pendulum and we are looking at what happens in the neighborhood of the origin but we already know what the origin is what kind of critical point is the origin in the damped simple pendulum it is definitely asymptotically stable if it is an under damped pendulum it is a spiral point which falls in asymptotically stable spiral point 
but what have we achieved here we have got a Lyapunov function which is positive definite we have got a v dot which is minus y squared and what can you say about that can I apply the first one is v dot less than 0 or can I only apply the second one this function if it is negative definite then certainly I can assert it is asymptotically stable but unfortunately this vanishes not only at the origin but all along the x axis. So in a neighbourhood of the origin it vanishes everywhere here and therefore it is negative semi definite not negative definite this is all one can assert and therefore the conclusion is this critical point is stable but we know it is stable and it is also asymptotically stable we have proved its stability now because the existence of this Lyapunov function guarantees that this critical point is at the very least stable but it is also unstable and that takes much harder work to do it is not enough to do this you need a much better Lyapunov function than this and there exists one where you can actually show that this as a critical point is also asymptotically stable. So I hope this uh, goes a little way in answering some of the questions that were raised namely does this imply that or does this imply this and so on as you can see if you choose a bad Lyapunov function you can make no conclusions at all if you choose a reasonable Lyapunov function you get some conclusions but it could be even stronger a more str a stronger result could exist but we have not been able to find it because we do not have a suitable choice of Lyapunov function. So the whole thing rests with finding a suitable Lyapunov function trying to see if the best possible one is found in any given circumstance or not. What would happen here if I took an undamped oscillator but I wrote an equation of motion which was our generalized oscillator I stop with that example today. So if I had x dot plus g of x equal to 0 there is no damping in this problem and now I give you the following properties this is 0 g of x is less than 0 for minus a less than x less than 0 greater than 0 0 less than x less than plus a. So it is an undamped oscillator with some possibly non-linear function of this kind what can one say about this what would you expect happens at the origin what kind of critical point do you have at the origin it is a centre you are completely right it is a centre there is no damping I expect some stable oscillations about the centre therefore I expect to be able to find a Lyapunov function where I have this property here what would you say is a suitable choice of Lyapunov function here yeah the energy of the oscillator would be a good the energy of this oscillator would be a good Lyapunov function now it is a Hamiltonian system in this case what is the energy of this oscillator this is the force here this is like the momentum why is like the momentum so what would the energy be I choose a Lyapunov function v of x comma y to be equal to one half y squared that is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy which is the integral of the force with the change of sign so this thing here is equal to integral 0 to x that is a positive definite function as you can easily check with these properties that is a positive definite function and now you can write down what v dot does and find out whether it is stable or asymptotically stable and a simple exercise shows you that the second of the criteria would apply and this would indeed be a stable critical point at the origin okay. let us try just one more example and if I do not finish this we will look at it next time x dot is equal to y and y dot equal to let us look at the non-linear oscillator the cubic oscillator that we looked at earlier the duffing oscillator or a variant of it minus x minus x cube minus gamma y so this is the friction term with a positive coefficient gamma 
this corresponds to motion in a potential which has got an x squared part and an x4 part and this is just the first statement that the velocity is uh, x dot is the momentum in this side. What would be a good Lyapunov function in this case? The energy once again so let us try that so let us put v of x comma y equal to we will put a question mark to see if that is the best possible choice so one half y squared plus one half x squared plus one quarter x to the power 4 that corresponds to integrating this the force here to give you the potential. This potential is just a quartic potential it is not the double well potential of the duffing oscillator that would happen if I put a plus sign here in which case you would get an inverted parabola near the origin and then a potential that goes like x4 up there but it does not matter you can give conclusions for both these potentials independent of what the sign you choose here is. So I leave you to figure out what happens in this case what can you say about this potential what can you say about this uh, critical point if you put it in it is not very hard to see all you have to do is to take the gradient of this V compute it and multiply this and see what happens so this implies that the gradient of V is equal to x plus x cubed as you can see the first component and the other component is just y. So I have an x y so this says v dot is equal to x y plus x cubed y that is this times this and then minus x y minus x cubed y minus gamma y squared and of course everything cancels out and what can we say about v dot now is it negative definite or is it negative semi definite negative semi definite so once again we see that this is not good enough all it says is that this critical point is stable does not yet establish if it is if it is asymptotically stable or not it is possible to find and I will give you next time a better Lyapunov function where you can actually establish that it is also asymptotically stable not surprisingly it will involve gamma you need to involve the constant gamma and then you can show that you have a better Lyapunov exponent which would do the trick. Similarly for the simple pendulum problem choose the following Lyapunov exponent and show that the system is actually also asymptotically stable for the damped simple pendulum choose the Lyapunov exponent choose this Lyapunov function and we can see that it is a positive definite function vanishes only in the at the origin in its neighborhood and then show that you indeed get V dot which is negative semi definite negative definite and therefore the critical point is indeed an asymptotically stable critical point okay. So let me stop here today and then